My lighting is crazy. Let's just ignore my psychopathic finch in the back there, shall we? <laughs> hey guys, it's Em, and I'm in a brand new location. Any of you who've been following me over on my Twitter or on my Instagram will know that I've been very busy creating a mammal studio, which is now about 80% near completion. However, I do have a rather spectacular, spectacular ferret enclosure behind me. Let me just show you a little bit here. I'm gonna tip you forward hoping that my camera doesn't fall off, but it's like a double layered enclosure that I have down here. There's like a tube that goes all the way down to the bottom, but we'll come to that on another video. I just wanted to introduce you guys really quickly to Dobby and Nifla, because they're my babies, my fur babies, my loves. I miss you when I'm not in the same room as you. Dobby is very athletic. She can jump, which is not common for a ferret. Um, she'll probably go leaping off into the abyss, but she's a very gentle creature unless you are a small human child In which case she would probably like to eat you. Yes She is small but deadly and then there's Nifla and Nifla um, Nif is uh, How can I put it nicely Nif? You are not particularly blessed with the gray matter but you're very cuddly and i love you so much today i want to talk to you about some new arrivals that i may have here at home and they came from the pennsylvania hamburg reptile expo for those of you who don't know much about like reptile expos there are such things as reptile expos and they're basically get-togethers where people who are really enthusiastic about the reptile hobby or the reptile community get together and they can buy different reptiles you can buy um, reptile paraphernalia um, you can get like you know earrings that are kind of reptile related you can get like um, snake hooks if you're into your venomous. The Hamburg Reptile Show is known as the Vegas of reptile shows because it's one of the only reptile shows with a high volume of venomous and that was one of the reasons I really wanted to go. But also I haven't really been to that many reptile expos. In fact I've only ever been to two of the same reptile expo which is the White Plains Reptile Expo which is in New York. So I'm gonna go to that one at the end of November. I think it's the 26th or the 27th. So if you guys are going to be going to the White Plains Reptile Expo in New York, let me know. So I did have in mind that I wanted two species of snakes. Neither one was there. It was just one of those things. So I didn't find the snakes that I was looking for. But Danny, who also came with me, was looking for two species in particular, and he did find those. So I'm going to show you his little haul in a second. But I kind of did something. And the, the kind of something that I did is I fell in love. I fall in love very easily, just, just realized this. And there was one vendor there um, who was selling an animal that was not reptiles by a long shot. Really not a reptile. <laughs> it's practically cruelty to leave them behind because I would be depriving them of my love. So... <laughs> So I brought them home. I would like to introduce you to two very, very special new additions to the family. Step up. Good girl, very nice. So this is about as far away from reptiles as you can get, but they were there and I fell in love. And this one over here is called Presto, as in like, you know, cause these are the same birds that magicians use. And this one over here was called Hey Hey because she's just a little bit derpy. But then I renamed her. So she's not called Hey Hey anymore. She's actually called Voodoo now because there is a certain religion. I can't remember offhand which one it is. Danny explained it to me because um, apparently growing up where he used to grow up, there were a lot of people who were part of this religion and they would, you know, often get birds like being shaken in rooms to banish evil spirits. Don't worry, I'm not going to be shaking these guys to banish any evil spirits. I've actually opted not to clip their wings because they don't need it right now. They've got a special aviary which is just over here to my side and also this room, this mammal room, which is now a mammal slash bird room, also doubles as a flight. It's a very long room, it like goes all the way, quite a long way down there behind the camera. Um, so these guys are able to fly around under supervision just so they don't land on top of the ferrets and end up getting eaten by Dobby.
Look how beautiful you are. So Presto over here, yes you, um, is a little bit older. He was born in January, whereas the derpy little one over here, um, Voodoo, Voodoo was born only a couple of weeks ago, so she's still losing her baby feathers. Can you see the difference here? So she's obviously still got a lot of her baby feathers and behind her neck you can see she's got some new ones which are just coming in i'm gonna do like a proper creature feature on them and probably a care video if you guys are interested because i couldn't find any decent care videos for turtle doves two doves to me two happy little doves is absolutely more than worth the extra effort that i now do sweeping up your mess every morning yeah the second species are a species that I have kept before. You've seen them on my channel, but I don't have any here and I miss them. So I'm gonna introduce you to two new members of the family. Look at my wooden stick and the animals that live on it. Yes, I decided to bring home two Madagascan hissing cockroaches and I'm really missing rice and beans. I couldn't bring them with me to the States because it was just not allowed. I petitioned so many times to bring my animals, but every time I did, they just said no. So I decided to bring home two little boys with me and they're so small compared to rice and beans, but I have a theory that if I introduce some low-level UV lights that they might actually gain some size. Who knows? Well, we'll see. I could just be talking rubbish, um, but it's something that I've heard before. I kind of love how orange they are. They, they kind of look like Halloween cockroaches, so I, I'm kind of thinking maybe they need Halloween-y type names. So if you do have any name suggestions, let me know. So these guys are going to need a lot of handling because they hiss and move around an awful lot. Also, I really don't mean to offend anybody, and I mean this in a very, like, non-judgmental way, but I've noticed that the cockroaches here have a very distinct odour, which I've never noticed before. So my cockroaches that I kept in the UK had, like, almost no odour. Actually, they had zero odour coming from themselves, it was just their terrarium. However, I have noticed that these cockroaches they pong a little bit like B.O. And I'm, I'm, I'm fairly certain it's not just me, because a few people have said to me, just yes, they, they do tend to have a B.O. smell. That's a bit weird to me. I've never known Madagascan hissing cockroaches to have an odor. So I may have to switch their food. I don't know what these guys are being fed before, but they stink of B.O. So if I'm holding cockroaches and I smell like B.O., I promise it's not me. It's these guys. You smell like B.O. So that concludes what I bought at Hamburg. So I went there looking for two snakes and instead I came home with two doves and two cockroaches. But I did buy a present for Danny. And when I spend money on other people, it doesn't count. It doesn't count. I wanted to get him something to basically show him that I really appreciate him, that I care about him, he does so much for me. So I decided to buy him. Ta-da! Do you see her? Say hello, gorgeous. They're kind of feared because they don't just move, they teleport. <laughs> I'm going to see how she goes with handling. You really shouldn't be handling huntsman spiders too much, but I kind of see it as a challenge, so I might. We haven't moved her out of her enclosure just yet, but we're gonna set up a really nice tall one that we've got for her. This is what she was sold in, but it's a little bit small for a huntsman, so we're gonna give her a little bit more room and give her something a little bit more fun to climb around in. We're going handheld. Do you see him yet? No. All right, let's 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 go inside and see if we can see him. Oh, by the way, this cage was custom made. It's not one that you will have really seen that many places. So this guy is a very special Europlatus fimbriatus, also known as a giant leaf tail gecko. Um, he is in his resting position right now. Um, he actually needs some special hydration formula, so we're gonna go to the vet and really hydrate him. But I just wanted to give you a quick sneak peek at him. He's not really the kind of gecko that you want to go handling because they can stress out quite easily. See that? He's just gonna back it up up the tree up there. We basically wanted to give him as much cover as possible um, just so that he doesn't feel like he's always on display. They're very very secretive animals. They come out at night time so they're nocturnal um, and when he is completely stuck against that cork bark you really cannot see him. So what are you doing Danny? 
So I'm drawing in some lactated ringer solution because we need to do a intracelemic, actually not intracelemic, it's going to be in, um, subcutaneous injection to replenish being dehydrated during the um, travel process. So we need to do quick hydrate them and this will help get them going to where it needs to be in a very quick manner. Oh wow. Sorry buddy, I know my hurts. Hold them there. I'm sorry baby, you're gonna feel so much better after this. Okay, so now he's got the fluid injected right into his legs and it should help to quickly hydrate him. Okay, I have one more animal that who turned the lights out. God, is that you? After the reptile show, Danny and I got home and we cleaned up the animals, we put the new animals away, we set them up, we put some in quarantine. Then we had a missed call from our neighbor. Well, today just keeps on giving. Um, we just got home and had a call from one of our neighbors and uh, we've got someone to introduce you to. Here he is. Okay, let's see what we've got. Let's take a look. I'm assuming right off the bat his wing is broken by the way it's hanging. Usually yeah. birds don't let their wings hang low unless something's severely wrong that they can't reel them in. So he's probably broken. The this other thing we're going to look for is sometimes you can find rings on the feet. So they might be a closed rung bird which would indicate that he's got an owner. Um, if that's the case then we'll be able to track him back to his owner. I'm going to grab him what might seem abruptly or fast. It's just because I want to prevent him from thrashing around and further injuring his wing. Hold you over, pull you towards me a little bit. Mm -hmm. Angle. Oh, he's a beautiful bird. Oh, he, he is a flyer. Is he a flyer? Yeah. Oh, look, guys, do you see that? He's got a ring on his foot. Let's get a nice close up. So he might be someone's racing pigeon. He probably, in that case, got nailed by a hawk, I would assume. Um, so, what do you think, Danny? Yeah, so he's a, um, a 2017 bird. So he was born this uh, year. He's oh. extending his wing up. I could see right off the bat there's a lot of swelling right here. So yeah, look at that. this is the point of our break. And yep, it's definitely broken. He's got a pretty bad fracture right here. Um, that is probably the equivalent of uh, just after your elbow, just before your elbow. Um, so that's pretty much what he's got going on there. And it's okay, buddy. I'm gonna hold this tight for a second so he doesn't move it. I know it probably hurts you, buddy. I want to take a look over here. We're looking in this wing. This is good. good. Good range. Now he just moved and I felt a little bit of a click in his hip. And that's not good. Um, I'm going to check his, I'm checking his hip right now. Yeah, he's got a bit of a click uh, in his hip. So I'm going to say he was hit by a car. Um, he might have a broken hip or pelvis as well. He's definitely been on this for a while. Um, on the road for a while hurt <laughs> Can't really show you that well, but um, he's sharp his breastbone is sticking out. So he's bit. underweight is he? Yes, he's a bit underweight. He's very cute. He's got this Please stop touching me look, but he's also very sleepy Poor sleepy pigeon doesn't know whether or not he wants to sleep or fly away but He can't fly away because he's all broken and bent you see from above, his wing should look exactly like this one, but it's really far out. So, we'll give him a night just to chill. We're going to offer him some food and some water, and then we won't touch him for about 12 hours. We'll revisit him and see how he's doing there. Hi, is this Yeah, so this. Hey, my name is Danny. I'm calling because uh, I got one of your pigeons, or a pigeon from your club. So, Danny just gave the bird registry a call and they're going to give us a call back but they think they know who the owner is. Now we just have to figure out whether the owner wants their bird back because sometimes the owners do want their bird back and they might like it for breeding or they might just say if the bird can't race and you give him a good, going to give him a good home then you can keep him. So um, we've done the right thing, we've called up because ultimately even though I don't like to think of things this way, the pigeon is someone's property, he is registered so it's no good to just hold on to a pigeon that 
that someone else could be missing. So we've done the right thing, we've given them a call and hopefully we'll get a call back tonight or tomorrow and we'll find out a little bit more about Little Donut. Although we couldn't find his owner, we did manage to track down his club. So the club know that we have the person's pigeon and they're still trying to contact the owner but there's no guarantee that the owner is going to want his pigeon back because he is injured. So if his owner wants him back then they know where to come and get him. However, we have also left them a message saying that you know we can't keep him forever or indefinitely so what we're going to be doing is giving him over to basically a bird trust and they're going to take over from us tomorrow so we're going to drive him off somewhere where um, he will either be reunited with his owner um, or if they don't want him anymore which is sometimes the case um, then he will be uh, forever homed at this place we're taking him to which don't destroy their bird. Just to be on the safe side I am wearing gloves with him just so that I can immediately throw away everything he's come into contact with um, he's in a cage down here which sort of limits his mobility a little bit and also it's away from the other birds so that they don't come into contact with his feces or anything. So there you can see he's got a broken wing on this side which is a real shame but the other wing looks good so they might break that wing again tomorrow, they might reset it but overall he's doing pretty well. Oh, lovely. So yeah, those are the animals that we ended up bringing home from Hamburg, um, from Pennsylvania. And um, I couldn't be happier, really. And you know, with the exception of the sick pigeon, everyone stays here. You know, we never impulse buy and then just like pass on. If any animals come through these doors and we commit to them, we're committed for the duration of that animal's life. Um, so you'll be seeing a lot of these guys around on my channel. I hope you enjoyed them. Oh, and I also just wanted to say again, thank you to everyone who actually at the expo came up to say hi. I was amazed that people actually like recognize me. That's, it's a really weird sensation for me to be walking and for people to be like are you exotic? Yes. Um, and in particular I just wanted to shout out to um, Greg and also to Daisy with the amazing blue hair because both of them stopped me and came up to say hi and um, they were both just so sweet. You know I've never done like a formal meetup where I've announced I'm gonna be somewhere and like to come and find me because I kind of feel a bit awkward. I mean what if I announce a meetup and then nobody turns up and I'm there just like all by myself that would just be a little bit sad. You know, I'm actually going to be at the White Plains Reptile Expo uh, next month. So if you're going to be there, let me know in the comment section down below. Hit me up over on Twitter as well. And just let me know if you're going to be around so I can keep an eye peeled for you guys. Also remember to hit that subscribe button down below and the notification bell. And please let me know if you have any name suggestions for my two male cockroaches. Thank you guys so much for watching. I will see you in another video soon. Bye. You're very good, aren't you? I don't have to clip your wings or anything. Okay, good. Let's go back in your little enclosures.